Israel has entered into an agreement to acquire a 70% interest in Imres BV in a $58 million uh, transaction there. Mark Lamberti, CEO of Imperial Holdings, joins us now to dissect the deal. Good to have you with us on the line today, Mark. Maybe if you can uh, unpack this kind of transaction, because it's not just about uh, buying a, tr a pharmaceuticals company to help distribute their goods, but there's also some management synergies that you're hoping to share across both firms. Uh, yes, well, our approach has always been uh, in recent times to acquire businesses where um, the management could, uh, you know, be around for a while, help us to understand the business and add to the overall uh, competence of our own management. Um, within our logistics business, which did about uh, 41 uh, 0.3 billion rands of sales last year. We've been driving into Africa uh, with a growth strategy around um, f the distribution of consumer goods, mainly FMCG and pharmaceuticals. And so uh, starting back in uh, 2012, we started to acquire businesses. And since then, we've built up a business of uh, over 5.5 billion rand in pharmaceutical distribution. Um, so Imras fits in very, very well with that. It's a wholesaler of pharmaceutical and medical supplies. And that goes to donors, to governments, to NGOs, to hospitals, and to retailers. Uh, and they operate out of uh, Holland, but most of their distribution goes into Africa. So this complements what we've got, both in terms of our uh, footprint in Africa in pharmaceutical distribution uh, and in terms of our management strength that we'll get. Um, we have, at the moment, um, a logistics, warehousing, and distribution capability across 11 countries in Africa. Uh, that's about 30 warehouses uh, of one sort or another, uh, and we think that this adds to it very nicely. Mark, it's uh, Nozipo sitting with uh, Google. Just to get uh, your sense in terms of why are you so bullish about uh, pharmaceuticals uh, in particular in emerging markets? We've also seen a lot of Indian players coming into emerging markets on the back of pharmaceuticals. And with that in mind, how are you going to sh make sure that you are able to differentiate yourself uh, strongly? Yes, we, we are. Uh, the, so the, the African market uh, is, as you know, uh, unsophisticated at this stage in many respects. Um, and uh, first of all, the distribution of ethical drugs requires some uh, level of expertise. Uh, a couple of months ago, I turned the sods on a, a um, warehouse in Kenya where we are able to say to our principals, people like GlaxoSmithKline or Pfizer and so on, that we will maintain uh, ethical drugs at a certain temperature which keeps them um, uh, you know, efficacious and so on. Um, and, of course, that kind of uh, relatively sophisticated distribution does not exist in Africa. We believe that that's a role that we can play. To the extent that some of the um, Indian players you refer to are coming in, they are mainly manufacturers, and uh, we believe that we can distribute on their behalf. Uh, in fact, in this IMRA's uh, business that we've got, we are obtaining a, a, a number of our products out of India. Uh, we've got uh, quality control chemists in India uh, monitoring that. And so the, the, the promise that we make to our principals is that we will be able to distribute these goods, get them into the hands of the consumer um, in, in good shape. Just one thing that might be interesting to you is that our, our previous acquisition, EcoHealth, is currently distributing into 800, it's distributing into 800 hospitals, into 3,000 retail pharmacies, and into uh, a number of sub-wholesales, which gets to about 40,000 informal medicine vendors in Nigeria. So we, at the moment, are distributing approximately 70% of Nigeria's ethical drugs already. So this footprint that we've established and we will continue to grow, we believe, uh, is vibrant. It's, um, it's an interesting one, and we think it will give our, our business a, a great opportunity going forward. Mark, uh, it does seem as though distribution does need infrastructure to support it. Does that continue to be a challenge on the continent? Um, uh, yes and no. I mean, in many cases, you know, we, we, we have taken the approach that uh, trying to establish um, a footprint green field, as it were, in other words, going into countries, finding a piece of land, establishing a warehouse, that is too slow for what we want to do right now. So our approach has been uh, to buy businesses. Uh, they've normally been um, well-run family businesses. Uh, to keep the vendors in uh, with some kind of a profit warranty for a number of years so that we can learn the business, learn the country, and uh, over time put our own management in place. Um, and uh, we think that uh, doing it that way uh, by buying the infrastructure is, is uh, a quicker route uh, to the footprint that we want to get uh, than, than, than establishing it. Uh, from, from a Greenfields approach. Mark, thank you for making the time to join us. Of course, that was Mark Lamberti. He is the Chief Executive of Imperil.